Hi, Gary. Welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Let's start with China's economy. It looks certain that this year China's economy might be growing the slowest in 10 years. How has your business been impacted? The Chinese economy this year will grow more slowly than it has in the past, but I don't think that that's a great surprise. I think that's a natural evolution of China starting to go to more of a consumption-driven, um, more higher value-added products in the economy. Um, I think that there's some hesitancy by foreign investors, so you've seen a slight drop in foreign direct investment this year. Uh, but I think this is all relatively healthy as China starts a transition. And what I think is happening in our business now is you're going to have to be more selective. You're not going to get bailed out of your mistakes by the fact that the market's growing very quickly. So in the past for Qi Ming, we've made approximately 70 investments in the last six and a half years. Our failure rate, we've had less than 10% of the companies fail, which is extraordinarily low for the kind of investing we do compared to what it would have been in the U.S. or other markets. So as our market matures, we expect in the early stage companies more failures. You are a veteran in the IT internet sector. Where do you see attractive opportunities in those sectors right now? So the most attractive opportunities are clearly in mobile and it's clearly in the migration of all the services that you do today on the internet, on your PC, uh, your laptop, your desktop. It's the migration of all those to mobile. So people doing more electronic commerce transactions, people doing more monitoring their life uh, types of transactions, whether it's keeping track of your steps or your calories, uh, keeping track of your photos. So it's more and more moving everything that you would normally have had tethered to your desk and having that now with you wherever you want to be. I think also it'll be interesting here to see how privacy evolves and issues around privacy. Um, there's no Facebook in China unless you go through a VPN, but there are other companies that have tried and I don't think anyone has achieved that yet to the extent that Facebook has in the U.S. People express themselves through Weibo, on Sina, and Weixin, and, and other products like that, but they haven't been willing or they haven't trusted their entire life to those sites yet. Your first fund started in 2006. What's your plan A and plan B for exiting those investments? That's a, a topic of much discussion inside Qiming. I think Fund 1 has had four uh, IPOs. Um, China Cash and Date uh, or CG Jiayuan were companies in Fund 1 that went public. Those companies we were fortunate enough to invest relatively early. So our cost basis, even at the lower price in the market today, is still quite, is quite good. So we'll make, we make money on those investments. Um, Tiger Med, which was the first company that just went public on the China Exchange, that's an extraordinary return for Qi Ming. Um, unfortunately, for many of our offshore companies, many of our internet companies, the companies that, number of the companies that went public in the U.S. from China really didn't behave well or they didn't, they missed their first quarter or their there was uh, allegations of fraud. So I think what has to happen is slowly you have to build back that trust and you have to build back the confidence of the investors in those businesses. So we still expect to have a number of our internet companies be able to go public in the United States for Fund 1, Fund 2, Fund 3, but we think in the market will be more selective. Um, the Chinex market, particularly for our healthcare and clean tech portfolios, will likely be the market, the most likely market for exit. We have seven companies now in the process of preparing to go public in China. So the plan B, well, at some point, the logical thing is to sell the company. And you're starting to see uh, the large, the, the four horsemen of the apocalypse in China, right? So you have Baidu, you have Tencent, you have Alibaba, you have Sina you start to see them become slightly more acquisitive. You'll see more acquisitions in healthcare. So foreign firms that want access to the China market, whether it's in medical devices or services, you'll see those firms start to make more acquisitions for China entry. The hardest M&A activity is China, Chinese to Chinese company uh, because there's a great deal of pride for this, those CEOs and the negotiation on price and the negotiation on whether or not they can do it themselves is always a very uh, contentious one. But I think M&A will become a larger part of our exits over time. Historically, if you look back over the last 25 years of venture capital, on average, if you returned two times your money, you were in the top 25%. I'm very confident all of our funds will be well within that area. Gary, thank you so much. My pleasure.